Good morning. Let me take you with me on my commute to the studio. Right, here's the studio set up and ready to do a third version of the oak tree painting, this time using oil colour. First one you can see over here, which is the watercolour. Uh, second one is there, there's the acrylic painting that I did in the uh, previous video. And today we're going to use artisan water mixable oil colour. Water mixable because it means you can uh, wash your brushes in water rather than solvent and you can mix the paint a little with water as well. Some people prefer water soluble oil colour because um, they don't like the smell of solvents or they're allergic to solvents. They behave in a very similar way to traditional oil paint. Um, they dry, if anything, a little bit more slowly than traditional oil paint and certainly much more slowly than alkyd paint, which is another of the uh, types of oil paint that I like to use. Um, so exploring the colours first, I've got out lemon yellow. It's a similar range of colours as I've used in the watercolour and the um, acrylic painting. I've got French ultramarine, phthalo blue, but this time burnt umber, and there's a tube of white, titanium white as well. I know many of you haven't got exactly the same colours that I've got, but it doesn't matter. You should be able to produce your own version and this is an opportunity to explore the colours and how the colours work. Other tools I've got around are, um, I've got a, a couple of knives, these are painting knives, the ones with the angled blade, which I like to use either for um, mixing the paint on the palette with or applying to the canvas and or scraping paint off the canvas. So I'll be using a mixture of these and brushes, which I've got um, just a small handful of brushes and I might not use all of these, but I tend to pick out brushes that either have like a, a worn away profile like that or this shape, which is called a, a filbert, which has a rounded end. I just like the kind of marks those brushes make. I have got a round brush as well, which I anticipate using for the branches. And some smaller soft brushes, which are generally sold for watercolours or acrylics. <clears throat> but you can use them for oil paint as well when it's thinned down, which are going to be handy for painting the finer twigs. Uh, find myself picking up or, or having available quite a lot of the pro art, pro art or pro arte, I'm not sure how it's pronounced. Seem to be a, a good quality, long lasting brush made by pro art. The uh, exception in this handful is this um, Winsor and Newton artist's hog, it's called. These bristles are made from hog's hair. 
uh, all of these are natural hair brushes actually maybe except for that one I think this is a this is a pro art it's called sterling for oils or acrylics and I think that's a synthetic one by the look of the uh, bristles I think the reason why um, oil painting brushes have tended to stay with natural hair with hogs hair is because it withstands washing in solvent better than the synthetic brushes but if you're using water mixable oil colour then that, that might be all right just to use synthetic brushes which I think a few people are preferring to do these days with more awareness of animal welfare. Uh, around here as well is a palette, well used old palette you can see I use quite a lot of green and blue. Uh, some uh, oil painting medium which is just a liquid which uh, helps the paint to, to load on the brush and alters the consistency of it makes it easier to paint out. You can use it straight out of the tube but I usually use it thinned out a little bit with medium which is usually a mixture of oil and thinners <coughs> and in this case <coughs> it's the uh, water mixable thinners which are formulated to go with these paints. A rag, wiping my hands, wiping my brushes, and a pad with some colour out on it, which I'm beginning to explore some mixtures of the colours that I'm going to be using in painting. Now, it's a really good thing to do and something we often do in class. I recommend that you, you do a bit of a warm-up exercise, either mark making or exploring colours just to begin to think about the painting process before you actually start doing a painting. So I'll show you what I'm doing here. Um, I've got a little daub of each colour out. Number one, that's the, uh, the burnt umber. Two, the phthalo blue. Three, ultramarine. Four, lemon yellow. And there's my um, titanium white. So with each of these, I'm going to mix each of these with each other. And I've started off here with number four and number three, four plus three. And I've got three mixtures of those two colours. So in the middle, I've got a green, which is midway between those two in, in its quality. On this side, I've got a more bluey green. And on that side, I've got a more yellowy green. And each time I've also mixed them out with some white. And in doing this exercise, you can find out about the sort of innate translucency or opacity of each of the colours as well. And I'm finding that the ultramarine is quite translucent and as is the lemon yellow and it's producing quite a translucent green. You see I'm um, doing this exercise using a little knife which is much easier than using a brush because you can each time you do a bit of mixing, you can just wipe it off with a rag instead of having to wash the brush all the time. So with uh, four and two there, I've got a little tiny bit of four, which is the which is the lemon yellow, and two, which is the phthalo blue. So let's put a little tiny, tiniest bit of phthalo blue into that lemon yellow. And as usual, you can see it's really, really swamped the lemon yellow. And with that tiny amount of phthalo blue in that larger patch of lemon yellow, I've got the blue shade of that green. So it's not a matter of equal quantities producing a middle green. It's whichever colour is stronger will dominate the mixture. So to make the mid-green, I'm going to need to wipe the knife, take some more yellow, Yeah, 
this is a nice um, slow exercise you can do. We don't need to rush this. It's a really good way to explore these colours. Wipe the knife again. Make a bit more yellow. And try and produce a much more yellowy grain here. I'm just going to take a little bit of that from the middle mixture. Add to that yellow. See if I can get a clearer difference between the uh, the middle green and this more yellowy green. So this will teach you about balancing the colours against each other in terms of the strength of each colour, as well as exploring where the colour is more opaque or more translucent. Okay. I'm thinking I could take that, put that into the middle now. I want to see more of a difference between the middle one and the darker one here. So I can go backwards and forwards. Okay, and let's now put a bit more yellow into this mixture. Hopefully we'll see two distinct uh, hues now. The yellowy hue, the mid hue and the more blue hue of green. Okay. And then also, each one of these I'm going to mix some white. I'm not giving myself a lot of room there, but I'll just have to see what I can do. into that one. I can compare this green to that green quite um, effectively. And in the green here, which was mixed with ultramarine rather than fallow blue, it's made a slightly warmer green than here. So it's mixed those lemon yellow and fallow blue make a very cool clean green. The one with the ultramarine, because ultramarine is a slightly more purpley blue. Uh, there's a wee bit of red sort of hiding in it, which makes the green slightly warmer and slightly less, um, less pure, I suppose. Slightly neutralised. Okay, and then squeeze a little bit there. That's uh, it's an interesting comparison with the oops <laughs> with the shade up here, which has made a much more sort of grey green compared to this more uh, perhaps again it's more it's more of a pure green because the blue is a greeny blue <laughs> and the yellow. There's a greeny yellow in this mixture. It's a very, very interesting exercise to do. You should really take your time over it. So I will finish doing this exercise and come back to you. I just thought I'd show you the colour mixing exercise before it's quite finished, where you can see the mixtures of the blues and the brown have made, uh, well, almost black. You can only see the difference between these ones here when they're mixed out with white. And you make some, like you've got some nice greys, some warm greys, some cool greys. But it's amazing the variety of different colours you can get just from mixing pairs of each of those. And of course you can then modify those colours by adding three colours, three of those colours together. Good use for range for landscape.